Hey everybody, what is going on and welcome back to another video. So today I'm doing a tune-up on the Tahoe. Um, I already got started on the driver's side. Pretty much I'm going to be replacing the plugs, the wires, both valve cover gaskets. Then I also went and picked up some mass airflow cleaner. We're going to get the sensor cleaned and also go in here and clean any gunk that might be in the throttle body. I'm doing the valve cover gaskets because after I did the engine bay cleaning and got all that like crust and gunk off the valve covers, you could clearly see um, they're dripping oil from the center grommet. And as for the plugs and wires, I went and picked up a set of uh, original OEM AC Delcos, as well as uh, some upgraded ignition wires. I'll show you those in a bit once we actually get to installing them. You see here, all the driver's side plugs are out. They don't look too bad. I'll tell you one thing though, those wires were a pain in the ass. I wouldn't uh, put it past those wires being original because most of them pretty much just broke pulling them off without even putting much tension on it. Just a slight little tug trying to pull the boot off the uh, spark plug. They just ripped right out. And on other trucks I've done in the past, usually you can, you know, twist these things around, give them a good yank, you know, and uh, usually they'll come off with a little twisting, but these didn't even give me a chance. They just ripped right out of the boots right away. Um, a little tip for that, if you do run into something like that, what I ended up doing was being they pulled out and they were flush and I was left with uh, this piece down here. I went in there with a uh, 7 8 socket and uh, just put that on there. Then went in there with the socket wrench and uh, just gave them a little twist because usually once you get them to break free and twist on the plug, they're going to come off uh, most of the time. Sometimes they do still give you a problem, but if you can at least get them to twist, you have a lot better chance of them coming off um, instead of breaking like that. If you do want to reuse them. Also, yes, it is cold out today. Uh, one of the colder days that we've had so far coming here to our trusty three ton thermometer. Um, all right, it's 31 now. Before it was 29, I guess the sun came out a little bit, but still definitely not the most ideal weather to be changing your spark plugs in. But anyway, driver side's all out. I'm gonna go pull the passenger side. I gotta get all the wires off of here, get the plugs out. Then before I uh, put the new plugs in, we're actually gonna go and do a compression test on this thing. I figured, uh, you know, a lot of the plugs are out, why not? Let's see what the compression numbers look like. Um, keep in mind, there aren't any problems with the truck. It's running absolutely fine. It has plenty of power, you know, there's no smoke, nothing like that. I just wanna do the compression test uh, just for laughs to see what the numbers are at um, with 212,000 miles on it. While I'm fumbling around trying to get these last two plugs loose, uh, this truck has 706 heads on it, which aren't really the most desirable heads. Um, I think these are actually the ones that are prone to cracking. And these are actually the exact ones that I had on the Camaro before I upgraded them. I still have a set, um, a good set actually, sitting in the basement. But the great thing is, any upgrades I do to that car, like um, when I finally get around to doing, um, you know, when I finally get around to doing the Texas Speed heads and stuff, I could take the 799s off that car. And any of you LS guys know that those are pretty much a 243 like GTO LS2 head, and they do flow a bit better than a uh, stock truck head. <laughs> Because the valves are a little bigger. I think the intake valves are a little bigger. And uh, the great thing is, being the Camaro is also a 5.3. And has the same dish pistons. I think these are both... I want to say this is an LM7, but I don't think it is because it's a flex fuel engine. Um, they both have dish pistons. And on the Camaro, when I put those heads on, I had a milled... 30,000s just to uh, bump the compression back up because with those heads uh, being they were on a 6.0 on the 5.3 the compression would drop I think to like uh, 9.1 so I had them uh, milled 30,000s to bring the compression back up to like the 9.5 9.6 whatever it is stock so I could just pull those heads off the Camaro maybe do valve seals on them and just throw them on this truck I'll have a nice little upgrade maybe with a set of headers you know, get a tune, and it should wake it up quite a bit. Oh, God. This one hurts. I'm going to actually see if I get in there with the Milwaukee ratchet. Because this would be a great test for this thing. There is enough, there's enough room to get the ratchet in, but not enough to really twist it. There's also no room to press the button. Just pull it. Ah, uh, double shit. Oh, triple shit. 
There we go. All right, so I got all the plugs out. This side definitely went a lot easier than the driver's side, but now I have my compression tester here. I'm just gonna screw this into each cylinder, um, floor the gas pedal and crank it over. I'm not exactly sure what number we're looking for. Um, I've been digging on LS1 Tech and just on Google searches, and the only thing I could find is that um, Everybody says, GM says, anything below 100 is bad. Um, other than that, I've seen numbers range from like 120 all the way up to 190. So I'm expecting we're going to be somewhere between 160 to 180. All right, number one, we're at 180. I know a lot of you guys who watch my channel do work on cars and stuff. But for anybody who doesn't, as far as cranking this thing over, you're pretty much just cranking this till it doesn't go up anymore. I know a lot of people... They're like, oh, give it, you know, seven cranks or five cranks and stop. Uh, you're going to kill the starter motor. You want to crank this until the needle isn't going up anymore because, you know, the engine is going to be building compression. If you just do it, crank it like three times, it's going to stop, um, you know, somewhere down low and you're not going to get an accurate reading. So once, you know, you see the needle going up and you see it's pretty much not moving anymore. That's pretty much where you're at compression wise. The other thing is with all the plugs out, there's no load on the starter, so it's pretty much just free spinning the motor. That's about 175. One eighty five. Oh we got one ninety five on that one. One eighty six. One ninety. Ooh, that one's a little low. I might not have it down all the way. Let me check. All right, I put a little of my uh, trusty old ass penetrating oil to see if I get that to go in farther enough. I don't know if it was down all the way. All right, that went down a lot smoother. Eh, we got a little more out of it. Uh, 50. We got 165 on that one. All right, so looking at our final numbers on the uh, passenger side from front to back, we're looking on cylinder two, 180, cylinder four, 175, cylinder six, 185, cylinder eight, 185. And then we come over to the driver's side, um, bank one, starting at the front, cylinder one was 195, that was the highest. Cylinder three was 186, cylinder five was 190, and cylinder seven, which was the lowest, was 165. Now, ideally, you want all these to be within around 10% of each other. So for uh, cylinder seven being the low one, that would have to be around 175 to be uh, within 10% of the highest, which was um, cylinder one at 195. Um, it's only 10 PSI. I'm not going to worry about it. I mean, this thing does have 212,000 miles on it. Um, to go further with this and see exactly why that was a little bit lower than the rest, I would have to come in here with a, a leak down tester, put some air in the cylinder um, while it's on compression and see where the air is leaking from. Either it's going through the rings or um, out through the valves. All right, so with the compression test done, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, we're ready to go and put the new plugs in. Yeah, cylinder seven was a little low. Uh, she's an old girl, a lot of miles. Let's just uh, let her be. One day, maybe she'll get a new set of heads and uh, We'll give her a little dingleberry home, some new rings. Um, for now, we're gonna leave her the way she is, get those new plugs in there, new wires. I have to get these valve covers pulled. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time to do that today. For you guys, it's all gonna be in the same video. For me, I'm probably not gonna be pulling these things until next week, but let's go get the uh, new plugs and wires out. I'll show you what I picked up. All right, so for the plugs, I'm just using uh, factory replacement AC Delco plugs. I didn't really go crazy with this just because the car, um, well, truck is pretty much still stock. I was looking at like maybe getting a set of NGKs or something, but I figured there really is no point because if this truck does eventually see boost, I'm gonna have to get a colder plug over what I would put in there NA anyway. So I figured I'll just um, leave it the way it is, put the factory replacements in. These plugs are really, really good. They last you like 100,000 miles without a problem. But as for the wires, I went and picked up a set of MSD um, just for the fact that AC Delcos were about 85 bucks from AutoZone. I didn't even bother looking online, but AutoZone wanted 85 bucks for these and I got these for like 80 on Summit. Uh, these are the same wires that were on the Camaro. I just have the red ones on the Camaro. I figured why not go and uh, put a little bit of a better wire. Um, obviously, this isn't really going to do anything for power, 
but over the stock wires, they're just made so much better. I mean, the insulation is a lot thicker and uh, the boots are just a lot more durable. They're not gonna rip out like this um, if you gotta go pull them again. All right, so I'm about to install the new plugs. Now on the box, it says to uh, gap these. These aren't Iridium plugs, these are platinum. <laughs> Um, the sticker under the hood says 60 thousandths, but I looked online and apparently there's a uh, TSB stating that the new gap set by GM um, is supposed to be 40 thousandths. So just looking at these plugs here, um, putting the gapping tool on here, it's pretty much at 40 thousandths um, without touching them. So I'm going to leave these alone and just put them in the way they are. Oh, cylinder eight. We meet again. This is just, this has bad news written all over it. I'm gonna drop that plug and shatter this shit into a million pieces. All right, we're going in. All right, note for next time. Use my dominant hand. That is taking too long. It's gotta be a better way. All right, for some reason I only have seven spark plugs. I think I had them all when I did the little up close recording. Oh, I threw it in the garbage, isn't that nice? There she is. Cause I'm a little too eager to get this done. I think I'm going to start leaving all of the uh, mishaps in my videos. Like this spark plug right here. That's taking forever to tighten. I tend to edit all that out to give you a nice, clean, shiny video. But all the crap that goes wrong while I'm doing most of this stuff, I think it's a lot more entertaining than the actual finished product. All right, so new plugs, wires are in. Uh, what I really like about these wires are that the uh, lower boots are flexible. So if you're running headers, and the main reason I put them on the Camaro is that these are flexible and they pretty much can bend in whatever position you need them. Um, plus, you know, like any other plug, you could kind of twist the top and angle the top whichever way you want it to come out. Um, but with these, you could just kind of bend them up and they'll stick wherever you put them. So if you have really like uh, messed up headers or uh, you know you don't have a lot of clearance between the plug and the header, you could just bend them wherever you need them. The other thing um, I forgot to mention, I didn't put these little heat shields back on. These wires are a lot more um, resistant to heat than like the stock ones. Plus these don't really fit on the MSD wires that great. So I just left them off. I didn't put them on on the Camaro either. And it has long tubes and those wires have been fine. They're not like uh, getting toasty or anything like that. I think it's time for a uh, Instagram post, little mid video Instagram plug. Yes, that is gonna be an upcoming video. Um, as of, January 17th, I still haven't replaced the transmission lines, but I did get a nice cool um, giant cooler from a guy that messaged me on Instagram. So if you're watching this video, thank you for that recommendation. That is gonna be an upcoming video. I also ordered the quick disconnects um, so I could reuse the stock lines. I don't have to use hose clamps and stuff like that. Those boxes are empty and there are old plug wires in there right now. I usually do this before the video, but I kind of got distracted. Post. Yeah, so if you don't follow me on Instagram, 
Um, link is gonna be down below. Oh, and I just realized I'm supposed to do the valve covers in this video. So everything I just did as far as the spark plug wires go has to be reversed. So it is two days later and I just got the driver's side valve cover finished. Now we're gonna move on to the passenger side. Everything came off without a problem. I literally got this thing done um, off the car, cleaned up, new gaskets on in about 20 minutes. And I gotta say the inside of this engine looks absolutely flawless. I mean, there's absolutely no sludge. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second once I get the driver's side off. Um, excuse me, once I get the passenger side off. But uh, pretty straightforward. All we're gonna be doing here is uh, popping off the plug wires. We gotta get these heater hoses unclipped and just kind of out of the way. I'm just gonna uh, try to pull them over this way or uh, maybe just leave them where they are and try to get the valve cover out um, from underneath. The dipstick should be able to stay alone. Um, I can get to the coil bolts um, without having to move that, it looks like. And then um, there's just this one white connector here for the coils. You take that off and then the little harness going to each coil actually stays on the bracket. And then the bracket itself has to get unbolted from the cover because if you can see here, it's kind of covering the bolts and when you get towards the middle, the, the bolt's completely covered. So that bracket has to come off. That's just held on by random like um, 10 millimeter studs. So I'm gonna zip them out with the ratchet, um, get the wires off, the connector, and then it's just the four eight millimeter center bolts for the valve cover, and that's it, the thing comes off. That's not good. All right, so as you can see, I was removing that uh, valve cover. We ran into a little bit of an issue. Um, the fitting right by the transmission dipstick going to the water pump for the heater core snapped clean off the hose. It has like this quick disconnect fitting. And as I was trying to remove it, I ended up taking a chunk out of the end on the firewall there. Now that's just like a little plastic T so that looks like it should be easily replaced if you pop it off the heater core um, and then you could just do that quick disconnect and replace that. The hose is all right. I would just have to find another quick disconnect fitting for this. Um, it's kind of starting to snow right now, so I'm not going to, um, I, and plus I can't drive the truck. I'm not going to be able to find something. So for right now, I'm going to pull this um, spring clamp off of here. I'm going to put a regular clamp on there and I'm going to try to get this hose over that lip right there where the clip actually sits and I'm gonna clamp the hose out and that should be all right um, because as long as I clamp it past that little lip, that should keep uh, the hose sealed and prevent it from sliding off. All right, so the passenger side valve cover is off. I ran into a little trouble, not only with that uh, coolant hose breaking, but I couldn't get this um, back bolt out here. I didn't want to loosen the dipstick, so what I ended up doing was just loosening it, and then I uh, slid the whole bracket up like that, and I was able to get to all the bolts. So right now I'm gonna come in here, clean this up with some brake cleaner. Um, I'm gonna change the gasket. These grommets just kind of pop out. I'm gonna slide the new ones in, um, and pull the gasket off the bottom, put the new gasket on. And I mean, just look at how good inside of this looks. I mean, let's go over to the head itself. And I mean, just look at that. It is just light golden, absolutely no sludge. Um, this looks like an incredibly uh, low mile or at least extremely well maintained motor. Um, so I'm very happy to find that. That leads me to believe that the oil changers were done on time and I shouldn't have any worries um, as far as the motor goes, well, knock on wood. So next step, I'm gonna get this cleaned up, get the new gasket on, grommets popped in, then we're just gonna go bolt this thing down, get everything back together, see if I get that coolant line back on there, hopefully it doesn't leak. Um, and then if the weather allows, maybe we'll pull this air box and uh, give the mass airflow and the throttle body a quick cleaning. All right, so after you get the grommets popped onto the sleeves here, all you gotta do is uh, get them seated in the valve cover. Um, you'll know they're in there because they'll kind of be almost flush to the top. And if you look through the bottom, you'll see there's the lip that's coming through and that's actually locking it into the valve cover. Um, for the outside here, you just wanna spray a little oil on there, spray a little oil on the grommet. And then I usually uh, just come in here, try to get it. Um, usually if you use the head of the bolt and you're very careful and you can keep it level and even pressure on both sides. Usually you can get it to kind of pop in this way.
All right, valve cover's back in place. All the wires are on, brackets on, coils are hooked up. Um, just check the oil level. So far, I put about 1,300 miles on this thing, and the oil is still pretty much right at the top, so it doesn't look um, like it uses too much oil. Other thing is, I had to replace the coolant line because the one over here, um, after that piece snapped off, this was just way too short, and it was putting too much pressure um, on the plastic T over here, trying to stretch it over, and I couldn't get it over the lip. So I had a piece of 5 8 um, hose laying around. I put a new heater hose on there, fresh clamp down there. I got rid of the spring clamp. And I managed to uh, get it all the way over that lip and then tighten it down. So honestly, I'm probably not going to do anything about this. I'm just going to leave it the way it is because um, being it's past that lip, I know the hose isn't going to blow off. Um, I got a good clamp on there. As long as I don't run into any problems um, with leaking, I'm just going to keep an eye on it. It's probably going to be all right the way it is. Uh, but right now, it's pretty much ready to start up. I'm going to have to see um, how much coolant I lost, let it warm up, top it off. But before I do that, let's pull the engine cover and uh, we'll get this intake tube out of the way, give the throttle body a cleaning as well as the mass airflow. Then be ready to start it up, let it run, and uh, wrap this video up. All right, so the throttle body as well as the mass airflow is all cleaned. Mass airflow is back on the truck. Uh, as for cleaning the throttle body, all I did was go inside and I put uh, the key on and a brick on the gas pedal. That's going to allow the blade to open up. You don't want to um, push this open by hand and kind of dig in there and clean it just because there are really uh, sensitive gears inside of here and they can easily break or uh, mess up the throttle body. So if you're going to clean this, I would definitely recommend uh, putting the key on or having somebody sit inside the truck um, with their foot on the gas, just have that blade open, then get in there and kind of gently clean any of the gunk out. You can also just pull this whole thing off the truck and that'll make cleaning it a lot easier. Plus you can get to the other side. Um, but there are coolant lines running under here and I don't really feel like having to deal with um, a more of a coolant mess and I got it pretty clean. It wasn't really that gunked up, but uh, I'm gonna go throw the air box back on, put the cover back on the engine and uh, we'll go and start it up. Give it a little bit too much uh, mass airflow cleaner there. Got all the cooling over there burning off and I blew that hose off. I'm just gonna let this run and warm up because I want to see how much cooling I lost so I'm just gonna leave the cap off. I might have some Dex cool inside I could just throw in it otherwise I'll have to take a quick run down to AutoZone. Alright guys, so it's a couple of weeks later um, since I did the spark plugs. Trucks are running absolutely fine. I actually forgot to shoot the ending to this video. I'm editing it right now. And I realized um, I never made an outro. But regardless, um, I got the plugs back in. Um, you saw I did the plugs, the wires. Um, I topped the coolant off after um, I finished filming. And the truck's been absolutely fine. That uh, hose isn't leaking off the firewall or anything. Um, so everything's pretty much good to go. Next video, we are going to be taking care of the uh, intake manifold gaskets on this. Just because I'm having this problem with um, the check engine light coming on. There's gonna be more of that in the next video though and the actual problem that I'm having with it. But for anybody who didn't know, there is merch available now. So go check out my store um, on Teespring. I got hoodies available. This one has a L6 mat on the front uh, with build your base model on the back. I also have one with just a uh, big L6 mat across the front. And there's also one that has a uh, hashtag side shot Saturday. So I have a few cool designs. I hope to have uh, some designs with the Tahoe out eventually. Um, I'm also gonna put a link to all the spark plugs I use, the wires, um, any tools and stuff like that. All right, so while I was filming the outro, for the outro that I forgot to film, I forgot to film the outro for the outro. So once again, links are going to be in the description for the hoodies, um, the LSX Matt hoodie with the build your base model on the back. I'm going to throw a picture of the back of this on the screen right now if you want to take a closer look at it. You can see it kind of uh, goes from when the Camaro was a V6 over to where it is now. So definitely one of my favorites um, out of the hoodies that I have available right now. I do plan on having Tahoe hoodies um, out eventually. I got to get some ideas, work on some designs. If you want to go check out more videos on the Tahoe, uh, click right here. If you want to go check out my 86 Camaro with a Z01 supercharger, I have a whole 20 something uh, video playlist on everything I did to that car as far as putting the supercharger goes right down here. But for now, I think that's finally going to do it for this video. So please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.